59 the other night at Duke. Syracuse was an 84-71 winner at home against Virginia Tech. Huntley Hatfield, Malik Brown get us started. Terrific crew tonight. Ron Gruber, Mark Schnur, and Jerry Heater on the whistle here at the Yum Center. This is Sky Clark, Mike James, and very quickly with White. The other two starters are the freshman Caleb Glenn and, of course, Brandon Huntley Hatfield. And inside quickly, here is that young freshman Glenn. Strong to the basket, rebound pulled away by Malik Brown. And look at this lineup for the Orange. This is the 15th straight game. They have gone with Taylor, Mintz, Starling, Brown, and you mentioned Bell's shooting prowess here as of late, too. Inside is Justin Taylor. Sophomore got stuck, threw it away to Clark. Here are the cards trying to create transition, and it's Glenn to the basket, and it rolls off the rim. That's one you have to have if you're Louisville trying to gain some confidence at the beginning of this contest is going to be critical for the cards who at times struggle a little bit. But defensively, Sky Clark playing really well, playing really well away from the basketball. Well, the Cardinal starters, this is the sixth time they've used this lineup with White, Clark, James, the freshman Glenn and Huntley Hatfield. They're only one in four in the five games they've started this lineup. Orange were fortunate there not to have another turnover. Get a reset of the shot clock. Look at Mintz. There's the start and stop you're talking about. Inside, Brown to work. Knocked out of bounds. Turned over to the cards. Judah Mintz has to survey the floor better. Whenever you're handling the basketball at the top of the key and you're coming off a ball screen, don't go to the strong side. They had two players on that side of the floor. Make sure that you're operating in space because that's where he's at his best. It's about surveying that portion of the floor before you make your move to the cup. Syracuse spent a lot of time today talking about forcing players in certain directions off that screen at the top in what Kenny Payne's team does. Spinning into traffic, James couldn't finish. He got knocked around. Last touch by the Orange. It'll stay with the cards and 12 to shoot here. And there is 57-year-old Kenny Payne. Now in his second year at his alma mater. Kenny Payne talked a little bit about how Syracuse switches defenses a little bit more man-to-man -man this year, but they'll go back and forth. Out of the corner, the three ball, James. And here's the orange. We're still scoreless, almost two minutes in. On the drive, the scoop from Starling and a foul. J.J. Starling just took initiative. That's one thing he can do so blindingly quick in the open floor. He gets ahead of steam. Watch out. My one critique there, if I'm Chris Bell, I've shot the cover off the ball the entire month of February. He's got to run the floor down <laughs> the corner. Hey, I'm a guy who focuses on those guys, right, Wes? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I really pay attention to what the shooters are doing away from the basketball. You have to put yourself in position to have success. He hit eight threes in a row against NC State earlier this season. Right. What ends up happening is sometimes guys get a little bit lazy and waiting for it. Do your early work. Get to your spots. He would have had a wide open three in the right corner. Starling. Hit the first, missed the second. First points of the game belong to Jonathan E. Starling, Jr. Clark in the Ville here. Brown fronting Huntley Hatfield. Here is Brandon working inside on a double team and score. Eight double doubles this year for him, Terrence. Four in ACC play, including 11 and 10 the other night at Duke. That's in an I'm bigger than you bucket. That's all that is. If you're Malik Brown, you had help coming from the baseline side. Jump up on top. Make him spin into that help. Bell the fall away. There you go. On cue from Oglesby, Chris Bell puts the orange back in front. He's certainly capable of that. Little Iverson cut, one dribble pull up. He's a good athlete. I, I'm a, become a fan of Chris Bell. And he's starting to figure out how to score without the basketball. White miss. Glenn's tap wouldn't go. Look at Mintz, skip it for Starling's three. Rimmed off, rebound for Huntley Hatfield. Syracuse is a better transition team, Terrence, and I think they get credit for it. When you have two guards that can take off like that and read the opposite side, Caleb Glenn 
Louisville's junkyard dog, yep. if you will. Nothing outside of 10 feet for that young man, but he plays hard. He's around the cup. And whenever you sprint the floor, West, and you put yourself in position, you front, help side's a little late. Big time finish. Yep. So here is Glenn, who's just a 58% free throw shooter, only his 20th attempt of the year. He's got three. Cards are back in front. Starling. Here's Brown. Bell, a shot fake, will carry him toward the baseline. Got White in the air and will draw the foul. Great defense until the last minute. Yep. But that's the respect that Bell, you have to give him because he shot the ball so well as of late. You, you can't lose your discipline at the last second. Stay straight up, maintain your verticality. Trey White, he's an equally good athlete. Make him make a tough shot over top. Chris Bell only hit seven the other night against Virginia Tech. Look at the confidence they've got here. They're clearing the lane for Chris Bell. Syracuse is. Don't worry about the rebound because there won't be one. And Bell makes them both. Hasn't missed one in the last five games. Mm. He's only had 29 attempts on the year. It's interesting. Mintz. Most teams in NCAA D1 don't shoot as many free throws as Mintz does. He's 245 attempts coming into the game. Here's Clark, a three, Starling the rebound. That's much better defense by Malik Brown. Jumped completely on the high side. Starling, and that's going to be offensive on Mintz. Red Autry does not like the call by Jerry Heater on the sophomore Mintz. His first, it's the second on the orange here. Third turnover on Syracuse. You think he had him square, Wes? I'm not quite sure on that one. Hey, that's, I'm, that's I'm, Jerry, I'm Jerry Heater's biggest fan. I want to make that clear. I'm not sure I agreed with that call. Yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm with you on that. And off the ball, there's going to be a foul on Clark. Underneath the basket, Sky Clark picks up his first. By the way, we got as many fouls as the teams have points here in the first <laughs> almost four minutes. And I only note that because you see some games this time of year where there are no foul. NC State today didn't shoot a free throw in the first half against did, Carolina and Chapel Hill. They didn't make a bucket in the second half for about 12 minutes. On the drive here is Mintz. Can't get there. Rebounded by Clark. Here's White with a pass. First basket for White. Cards back in front. That's Sky Clark making things happen. And Trey White understanding, if I run the lane, I'm going to be able to get opportunities. Taylor with a right hand. Tough shot. He made it. Justin Taylor, who had 6.6 .6 rebounds the other night, averages less than three and a half and three in the league. And that ball deflected by Taylor and fires ahead for Bell. Oh. Chris Bell turns it over for his second field goal. He's got six. Game starting to loosen up a little bit. Live ball turnovers lead to easy buckets with consistency, especially West with two teams that have the individual talent that both of these squads do. Kind of a half windmill by Bell, and here's Taylor with another steal, and he's going to dunk it home and draw the foul. Caleb Glenn is going to commit the foul. Justin Taylor. Back-to-back -back dunks by the orange here, T.O. Live ball turnovers will kill you, Wes. First, Chris Bell, little windmill here in Louisville. And Justin Taylor, he said, what you can do, sir, I can do almost as good. Let me get an and one real quick. Syracuse up four. Show the world what it means to be an ACC fan at Fanatics.com, the largest assortment of officially licensed ACC fan gear anywhere. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. When you automate sales tax with Avalara, you don't have to worry about things like changing tax rates or filing returns. Avalara. Are those pillows making you toss and turn? Do you wake up tired and achy? Now you can sleep well all night long. 
with the Contour Swan, ergonomically designed to cradle you from head to toe as it aligns your spine for the best night's sleep of your life. Look, the Contour Swan's unique orthopedic shape supports your back, shoulders, head, neck, arms, hips, knees, ankles and feet as it hugs you in total comfort so you won't toss and turn and unlike ordinary pillows the contour swan aligns your head and neck perfectly with a huggable area that takes pressure off your shoulders and arms and it prevents your kneecaps from touching for soothing relief in your lower back legs and feet sleeping with all those pillows my back hurts but with the contour swan i'm able to get in one spot when I wake up in the morning, I feel great. This Contour Swan has changed our lives. We're getting a restful sleep, and best yet, my husband doesn't snore anymore. My snoring disappeared. I wake up, I'm rested, I have a full night's sleep. It's fantastic. Plus, Contour Swan is hypoallergenic and will keep you cool all night long. And it fits any body shape in any sleep position. So stop tossing and turning. This body pillow costs over $119, but now on this exclusive offer, the Contour Swan can be yours for two easy payments of only $29.99. Plus, you'll receive this washable mesh cover so it stays clean and fresh. Imagine you get the Contour Swan and washable cover for the low price on your screen. We'll even ship it for free. So don't delay. Sleep well all night and order the Contour Swan today. Call now, 1-800-618-6103, 1-800-618-6103. Again, that's 1-800-618-6103. Well, it's a beautiful Saturday night in Louisville, Kentucky. What a fun town this is to come to in the ACC. Syracuse up four with Terrence Oglesby Western. Time for our Food for Thought tonight, brought to you by Food Lion. Here's Syracuse in the month of February. We talked about this at the top. The push now is on. Got to be a little more than considered maybe going into the final week, don't you? I think you need to win this one, and you need to put a, put a heck of a fight up at Clemson coming up Tuesday. I mean, that's going to be a handful on P.J. Hall senior night. Let's not get, get it twisted. That Clemson team's really, really good. Right. But if you're going to give yourself a chance, I mean, you have to be really close in that one. I think they have to win a game or two in the ACC tournament to at least warrant that kind of recognition. But by all means, I think Red Autry and what they've done this season, they've trans transitioned to a new head coach. Yep. They're doing a lot of different things defensively, playing more man, which Syracuse fans seem to have been clamoring for for the past forever. Right. And now they're just now starting to find their rhythm. And I don't think it's going anywhere. I think there's going to be continued progression with this program at Syracuse because kids want to play for the orange. Here's White working around Starling for the bucket. Second field goal for Trey White. Trey White's talented. Yes, he is. From Dallas, transfer from Southern Cal. All packed, all freshman team member. Yep. I mean, a guy that can really score, and he's pesky. And Bell had it knocked away. Good save by Brown. Two Bell, 10 to shoot. And put it in the hands of the guy who can dial it up. There he is. Step back three over the top of Clark for Judah Mintz. If he's able to do that, Wes, I don't know how you defend him. Because he attacks the rim at such a high level, and he gets you on your heels. If he's knocking down threes, Tough cover. Yep. He had 21 in the first meeting, but drew nine fouls that night, too. We'll keep an eye on that as the game progresses. On the drive, there goes James. And the rebound pulled away by Brown. And here goes Starling, and they're running again. Bell, the look away three. One and done. The orange. That ball's going up, isn't it? Yep. Fast, too. Here is White trying to shake Taylor. Clark and boy Taylor doing a nice job playing around the edge here on Trey White. We talk about Judah Mintz, uh, how good he is off the bounce. It's just a little size up, and you have to respect his ability to get to the cup. We'll step back and pull. The only thing is, whenever he's in the mid range, because he brings that ball across his face, he elevates really well. Whenever he has to back up a little bit, Wes takes him an extra half second to get that shot off. 
but that's being picky. I mean, this is a guy that can really score. Tyler Johnson, fresh off the bench, launches a three that bounds away. The freshman from Brooklyn averaging nine points, four assists in conference play. They're too loaded up on one side. Nice job rebalancing by Justin Taylor. And now you can start to penetrate and kick around. Starling to the basket, offensive foul. That'll be his second. First player in the game with two is J.J. Starling. You have to love it when Coach's kid gets in the way. Nice job getting in front, takes it in the chest. Van Payne, yep. Yeah. Averages about eight minutes a game against the league. Knows his role, comes in. Mm -hmm. Did not play the other night at Duke. Has not scored in his last six appearances. Did play a minute in the regular season meeting at uh, Syracuse back on February 7th. Huntley Hatfield to work. Wow, strong move with the right hand. And, and that's not Malik Brown, that's Justin Taylor on the backside. Malik was fully expecting him to come over and give help with that double team. Taylor has to know that, that that's coming. What a pretty pass there. Brown, the basket, his first, Terrence. Six-point lead for the Orange. Malik Brown, his impact isn't going to come just from scoring. He, he, he's an all-the-other-things guy, right? He communicates defensively, incredibly long wingspan, rebounds well. This is something they're going to have to knock out, though, because Huntley Hatfield's a problem in the paint. Yep. He had what? 19 points and 13 rebounds in the first meeting. And with a six-point lead, here's the orange again, and Bell tees up a three. Chris Bell now with nine in this first half. He has that much space. Just go ahead and start jogging to the other end. The missed jumper by White cashed in quickly at the other end. Johnson all the way through. Here's James with 10 to shoot. White again, pull up two. Mitz, the one-hand clutch rebound. Hey, but if I'm Louisville, I'm not mad at that possession. Behind the back for Taylor. And he got the foul from Payne. Zan Payne's first, fifth on the cards here in the opening half. And Syracuse doing their best work in transition, West moving the ball, and Chris Bell got to get a hand up. That man is deep. In this clinic, we pride ourselves on putting others first. It's on us to help care for our clients' well-being, to help them adapt. It's inspiring to work at a place where our patients succeed and we as therapists do too. With great benefits from principal, we feel appreciated for the work we do. Are you still cleaning your floors with a broom and dustpan? Or down on your hands and knees with paper towels? Or dragging out your big heavy vacuum? Forget about it! Georgia Mary Beth back with another incredible invention. It's the Zippy Sweeper, the rechargeable cordless sweeper that's lightweight and compact with an advanced triangular design that gets into corners and features 360 degree omnidirectional cleaning. It cleans any mess on carpets, hard floors, even long baseboards in any direction. Watch this. It cleans dirt and dust. All of her hair. And his trail of messy little crumbs. It cleans up wet vegetables. How about this confetti on the carpet? How about this broken glass? The secret? Advanced tri-brush technology. There's a separate brush on each side of the unique triangular head. No matter which way you move the triangular cleaning head, the three high-speed spinning brushes will sweep every speck from your floor right into the built-in quick-release dirt tray. Ordinary vacuums can miss messes and corners, but not the Zippy Sweeper. Its triangular head and built-in spinning edge brush pull the dirt out of corners where vacuums miss. Sorry, Fido. With its swiveling head and super low profile design, you can clean under your furniture without moving it. 
The Zippy Cordless Sweeper is five times lighter than an average vacuum cleaner, so it's great for cleaning the stairs. Zip into the future with Zippy Sweeper. Call or go online and get the incredible Zippy Sweeper for just two easy payments of $79.99. But wait, if you call or go online now, we'll make a payment for you. That's right, just pay $79.99. And that's not all. Call now and you'll also get free shipping. That's just $79.99 for the Zippy Sweeper and free shipping. Call now. This time belongs to those who want it most. Where youth is tested. And greats are challenged. The playoff push is coming. The time is now. Point lead for the Orange. Nine minutes into this first half. Great to be with Terrence Oglesby, West Durham. You talked about Chris Bell early. He's delivered. He doesn't need a lot of room. And, and whenever he's putting it on the deck and he's able to finish, that makes it so tough. But he understands it's a process of learning how to play alongside really talented guards. You run the floor, you move without the basketball, and you're constantly repositioning. Uh, Chris Bell's starting to figure that out. Whenever Judah Mensa is scoring 18, these things are going to open up for you. And over the last month, he's finally found his rhythm. This guy's talented. And he has a lot of tools in terms of a 3 and D candidate and some of, some things of that nature. I uh, I enjoyed our visit with Red Autry today. Adrian was I very, too. I thought he was very insightful about where they are offensively and what his expectation of them offensively is. And it, and it varied from player to player. It, mm -hmm. it, what an impressive guy is Red Autry. Syracuse is in good hands. Oh. That's for sure. I mean, I really enjoy talking. It's the first time I've ever sat down and talked to Red. Yeah. Tyler missed them both. 75% free throw shooter, so it stays a nine point game. Emmanuel Okorafor, sophomore from Nigeria, wearing 34, just got, I think he just banged knees with somebody. He's come up hobbling a little bit inside against Brown. Meanwhile, there goes Tyler Johnson flying through the air and gets the bounce for his first basket. Baseline drive, baseline drift, drives the middle. Tyler Johnson. Has a lot of skill, extremely quick. Now you see a little 2 3 matchup for Louisville, and Zam Payne just leaves the ball. And Mitz's lob, a little high for Justin Taylor's collection. Here's White trying to take advantage. Kick for James is three. Mitz another rebound. Look at the lead for Copeland. Quadir! Oh! No. Look out! Lost his shoe! <laughs> Jumped out of his shoe! <laughs> and carries it back down the floor. If he knocks the way with a shoe in the left hand, it would have been unbelievable, by the way. Copeland slides the Nike right back on. Extra propulsion from the young man from Philadelphia here. Holy smokes. He dunked on everybody in the Yum Center. And then just drew a foul <laughs> at the other end with a shoe in his hand. Live ball turnovers and bad shots. My word. Quadir Copeland. I call him the microphone. A lot of people call, call people the microwaves because they score quick. I'm calling him the microphone because he was the loudest guy at shoot around today by a country mile. Oh, yeah. Smart. Sky Clark with his first basket. What a finish. Building recovering from Copeland's dunk. I'm recovering. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is a 2-3. They start out as a 1-3-1, one, one, and it slides back into a 2-3, and they match accordingly. And Okorafor in the middle. He has to defend in one-on-one -on -one if he's going to be able to stay in. Look at Copeland. Good defensive possession. Now, to start this game, Louisville did a nice job of defending. That fell by the wayside. That'll bounce off Okorafor. Nice over-the-top rebound from behind Brown. Adrian Autry talked today how big they are, remaining Louisville. Johnson tried to deliver a core for a gift wrap box, couldn't handle it. All Emmanuel is going to have to do is catch it and lay it in the rim. And now under nine to go, it's a seven point lead again. Here's Mintz. Right to the basket and scores. A lot of contact. Five for Judah Mintz. But Terrence, he shows you so much when he does so little sometimes, right? That, that's exactly right. And, and a lot of times, he'll take steps, and he'll take a step with the same foot. It's, it's kind of strange to watch, but he's very economical with his feet and how he attacks the bucket. Johnson slashing through, scores. 
Second field goal for the freshman from Brooklyn. Tough kid. Tough kid. He's still learning the college game, though. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, he came in early. And, and the thing is, he has to learn to be patient. Plays very impatient right now. What a move. Mintz to the basket. A core four blocked it. Louisville trying to get a transition chance started. Here's Clark all the way down. Kicks it back for Johnson. Missed badly. Now here's the run out for Judah Mintz with Johnson trailing. And Mintz has his third field goal. Lead is nine. Clark the other way. They crash the glass. And I think this is going to be on Copeland. Hey Wes, I've seen, a, I've seen a lot of dunks this year. This has got to be top five. With here Copeland, let me get it from above the rim. My, my, my. Putting on a show here at the Yum. It's bow time. What's that? The bow jingler from Bojangles. The same bold flavor as their chicken? The same. And fries? The same. Mm, not the same. The Bojangler's back. Hook one while you can. It's bow time. Can we serve? See you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Hey, sweetie, how was practice? My mom was a cheerleader in school. She knows yeah. how intense it can be. That's why she always keeps me well fed. Girls. Oh, hey, Miss Jay. There you go. Come on, see, we got this. Let's go. Hey, honey, honey. Have some I may have picked basketball over pom poms, but mom. I still got the world's best cheerleader rooting me on. You're always there for them, and we're always here for you. Food Lion, here for every moment. Thanks to Avalara, we can calculate sales tax automatically. Avalara. What if tax rates change? Uh, Filing sales tax returns. Uh, Business license guidance. Uh, Cross-border uh, sales. Item classification. Uh, Does it connect with uh, the... What is an athlete? It's an attitude. A healthy desire to do as much as you can with your body. For as long as you can. Another year, another fence slum. Gatorade has lower sugar, electrolyte-backed hydration options to keep you rehydrated and replenished. Gatorade, for every athlete, forever. The most passion, the most intensity. This is the way basketball is supposed to be. recently changed jobs or received a raise? Make sure your taxes are being done 100% correctly. Intuit TurboTax has done millions of tax returns, so you can trust they'll do yours right with 100% accuracy guaranteed. Visit TurboTax.com. Did you know taking Zizol at night relieves allergies while you sleep? So you wake refreshed for a more productive day. Get 24-hour continuous relief that does not fade. Be wise all, take Zizol at night. I had straight A's all throughout high school, and instead of applying to a four-year university, I chose Central Piedmont. I found out about the Presidential Scholarship. It's a two-year scholarship, fully paid. I'm able to take prereqs for free, and so I'm able to get those out of the way before I transfer to a four-year university. I'm Victoria. I'm a student and a Presidential Scholar at Central Piedmont Community College. Well, don't forget another busy Tuesday night of ACC basketball right here on ACC Network. We'll have Coach Bayon, Corey Alexander, and myself in Chapel Hill at 7 o'clock for senior night for Armando Baycott. Carolina and the Irish for the first time. Then Georgia Tech and Wake Forest, by the way, a doubleheader follows this. And R.J. Davis, last two games, only 14-7 and 5 today. Everything looks a little soft after you throw 42 on the board, T.O. Hey, he's been amazing all season long. And, hey, look, I was critical of Carolina last year, but what Hubert's done with that roster, he's fit them perfect around what R.J. Yeah. Davis is and Baycott. And I'm happy that you – but I'm that, that you're going to be at Chapel Hill. I'm even more happy that Corey Alexander's going to be there for Armando Baycott's senior <laughs> night because nobody loves Armando Baycott. Like Corey. Like Corey. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, some are beginning to wonder if Corey might be getting a letter jacket in wow. Carolina this year. Lob went wild, recovered and scored by the freshman Glenn. What like turned into a, what a horrible possession can become a shiny item, right? Look at this. Unbelievable. Off the glass. 
That is incredible. That's Caleb Glenn just doing what he does. I mean, the skill level needs to catch up, but he understands where he can make an impact. 16 foul on the orange is the third on Copeland. So Starling and Copeland both with two or more. Copeland's third, and Glenn can't hit the free throw. Brown rips away the rebound. I think the best way to describe that possession was accidentally awesome. Probably right. Is that right? Yeah. So Copeland off the floor, and Kyle Cuff, the junior from Harlem, who started his career at Kansas, whose dad was a remarkable player at St. John's in the early part of this century. Hard to believe I say that. And Curtis Williams commits the Louisville foul off the ball, his first. That's six now on the cards. So Kyle Cuff into the game. He wears zero for Syracuse. You see Curtis Williams on the floor for the first time. He's the 6'5 freshman from Detroit who I think's got a terrific future ahead of him. Talented kid. Yep. Here is Mintz digging down on Johnson. Tyler. And there's going to be a foul on Johnson before the rejection by James. It, it's a bad matchup for, for Louisville, isn't it? It's a bad matchup and it's bad defense by Johnson because you're not going to block this shot. The best you can do is stay straight up. And then you have help coming. Mike James. He's in your kitchen. He's helping you out. Let your defense come over. You're six feet tall. You're not blocking any shots, especially on the ball. And for that matter, Wes, not many people are. Right. Play straight up. Let that second defender come over and help. Kenny Payne's a little frustrated. So is the partisan Cardinal fans. Nine and a half for Mintz. The orange lead is nine. Judah Mintz is continuing a very nice February into March here tonight, Terrence. James threw it out of bounds. Wild throw. I think he was looking for Williams. Turned over by the cards. In Louisville's first 15 minutes of the game almost, Terrence, there are way too many of those type plays, right? Yeah, and not only that, it's a Louisville team that's the worst three-point shooting team in this conference. And what ends up happening is they're all attacking the rim. Mm. They get so top-heavy, everybody's below the free-throw line, and it's led to a lot of leak-outs, whether it be dunks or open threes in transition. you got to stay on your feet. you got to have somebody at least get back. What Look at move. the movements put on James. Couldn't bury the shot. Win the rebound. Johnson in the front court. Now that, that's a point where Johnson's going to learn as he gets older. Hey, if I slow down, I can flow right into a drag ball screen, and it's going to make my job a lot easier, a lot quicker. They're almost going to give Johnson that straightaway three. Here's James with seven to shoot. Huntley Hatfield. And the rebound pulled away, and the stick back by Glenn. Seven for Glenn. Averaging just five against the league. How athletic is he? Very. Can get off the floor. Started at Louisville Mail. Hometown kid. Yep. Here nice is pass. Brown. What a pass. And a foul will be called on Glenn. Mark Schnurr the whistle on the freshman. His second. That's eight on Louisville. He's the first Cardinal with two tonight. Played at La Lumiere in Indiana after yep. his high school career at Mail here in Louisville. Caleb Glenn, his dad was a wide receiver in football here for the Cardinals. Brown misses the free throw. First of two for Malik Brown, and Glenn is out. Trey White has come back to join James Williams, Huntley Hatfield, and the freshman Johnson. Second for Brown is good. Malik Brown's got three. Louisville's lead or Louisville's deficit is eight. Syracuse playing more zone towards the end of the year. And quite frankly, Coach Autry said it has everything to do with depth. And they've had guys fall in and out of the lineup. They got to keep guys on the floor. You got to stay out of foul trouble. And that's one thing that does occur whenever you're playing that zone. You got Starling and Copeland with two and three respectively. So Cuff's going to get some minutes here. And Johnson stole it from Bell, but couldn't collect it before it hit the scorer's table. Louisville's well, been a completely different team defensively whenever they're able to either have a dead ball turnover or score. Right. They're setting up. 
They've had a really hard time. Exhibit A. And Williams. Oh, blocked by Bell and recovered by Taylor. Here is Mintz all the way to the other end, and he left it short and out of bounds. It'll belong to the cards. Look at this sequence at 94 feet. Great defense by Williams. Gets out the passing lane. He's off to the races. Thinks he has the easy one. No, sir. Chris Bell. What an athlete. I have two questions when we have our next dead ball. Two questions. No, I never blocked a shot like that. <laughs> That's not one of them. <laughs> nice pass. Really nice pass. Three ball out of the corner by White. Seven for Trey White. He and Caleb Glenn have 14 of Louisville's 26. The cards to within three. Here is Mitz. And Taylor turns it over. All right. It'll go to Louisville. Now, two questions. One, here's the steal by Williams. Why doesn't he dunk this? I think he thought he was open. Maybe so. Back at the other end, why didn't Mintz dunk it? <laughs> You're allowed to dunk. Right? I mean, Dan Peters, our statistician, he's with me. Neither one of us have dunked. I've never dunked. T.O., maybe. 50% 50, 50 career dunker in the ACC. That's okay. important. So my question is this. Why not dunk it? Nonetheless, three-point game. We just saw it at both ends in sequential plays. James digs in hard on the dribble and stolen by Brown. That's a play that Malik Brown wouldn't have been able to make last year. He's put on a lot of weight. What a strong defensive effort. Starling on the floor with the fouls, misses the jumper. Huntley Hatfield in the cards with a chance to tie. On the drive, Johnson feeds Williams. He spins through and stepped out of bounds. Just seems like everything's a day late and a dollar short. Offensively for the cards, trying to battle back in it. They're doing it with their defense. Investment opportunities are everywhere you turn. Do you charge forward? Freeze in your tracks? Or let curiosity light the way? At T. Rowe Price, we ask smart questions about opportunities like advances in healthcare and how these innovations will create a healthier world tomorrow. Better questions, better outcomes. I'm a guy who lost a bet and my dignity. Get out of the way. As if watching my team lose wasn't punishment enough. What are you looking at, huh? What are you? It's a one speed. <laughs> and if you have cut rate car insurance, odds are you'd be paying for that yourself. So get all state and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Hey, I'm walking here. I bought three of the same jacket to get the fourth free. I subscribed to get a deal on these memory supplements, then forgot to cancel. Yeah, well, you know, recognizing a bad deal is a part of the journey. Yes, Eva, would you like to share your breakthrough? I got AT&T's best deal on the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus and got to choose my plan. Oh. Yes, we don't make you sign up for the top tier plan to get our best deal. I still haven't gone. I subscribe again. Yeah, we know. Get the newest Galaxy on us with any of our best plans, guaranteed. I just love the competition, and basketball is a great way to keep pushing that every single day. Hey, more. Speeding oh. down the floor like a speeding bullet. Golf is all about getting creative, and it's about knowing how to play the game, not how to strike the ball, which I think a lot of players are underestimating. We are so dedicated to pushing our limit and growing each week. For Pitt, the first ever home ACC meet. Let me tell you a story about a girl. My goodness, Hannah Hidalgo. She walked around like she ran the world. Georgia A4 is on fire. She walked around like she knew everything. Rivers. Yeah. I went in back down to you kissed her ring. She's the it girl. She can't control it. The moment is here. Who will meet it? She has the Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament. First round begins Wednesday at 1 on ACC End. Well, Wes, Louisville starting to slow this game down, but earlier in this game, Syracuse in transition was awesome. 
because there's nobody back on defense and as a result they got some wide open opportunities including this one which was just silly. Wes but here Copeland the microphone with a pass here as well. I mean this Syracuse team they get out in the open floor difficult to defend because they have so many good athletes but on the other end Louisville the more they move the ball and have these longer possessions right the better off they usually are simply because they have guys back on defense and they know where the shots coming from well, if it's a live ball turnover you can forget it Syracuse electric in the open floor by the way despite the field goal drought the orange still shooting 56 percent from the floor in the first half and only only two threes for a team that averages right at seven we don't expect a lot of threes to be made tonight Add one more. Oh, but there's a reach in on Williams. Second foul on Curtis Williams is nine on Louisville. I will say the orange is only seven of 11 at the free throw line. They come into the contest 72 and a half percent in conference play. Louisville is 75 percent of the line. And here is here is Bell for the front end of a one and one. Like that set coming out of a timeout. Mm -hmm. Iverson's cut over the top, and then they turn down and re screen Bell to come up and get a shot. And Bell just uses his few years in college to get the freshman a foul. Bell's another guy who benefited from the offseason. Bell added some weight, 10 pounds of muscle to his frame. He was lean as a $2 steak a year ago. James inside and ball out of bounds. James wanted a foul, didn't get it. Louisville thought that they were going to get a whistle. Not only the players on the floor, the partisans here with T.O. and I. <laughs> crowd, crowd a little surly behind us on the uh, no whistle there for a foul. Starling, Mitz kept it. And put the ball on the floor before he stepped. Smart play. Pull up. Got it. That's where he's so good. 12 yep. to 15 feet. Elevates over the top. He's got good size, about 6'4. You put Johnson on him, he's significantly smaller. You got to send that second defender there quick. The lost art of the mid range jumper. Is that he, what it is? Yeah, he never lost it. <laughs> he needs to find his three ball. If he's able to do that, I mean, I don't know how you defend him. Another miss. The lead is five now for the Orange. Feels like a pretty big 220 here for Louisville. Here is Bell. Oh! Mintz to Brown for the hammer. Judah Mintz is showing you the full bag here in the first half. And a timeout for Kenny Payne. The lead goes to seven just like that. Mintz a pull-up jumper, then Brown the dunk. Depend keeps you drier than ever, so you can say yes to more than ever. Yes! Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Depend. The only thing stronger than us is you. IHOP has tons of omelets, so you can have omelets for breakfast, brunch, brinner, or even a brittle of the night snack. Try the new meaty, cheesy, and crispy mega omelet and add cinnamon dippers for a dollar. Only at IHOP. Well, Malik Brown's dunk, the latest salvo from the Orange, who has scored four in a row here to push it to seven with 2.11 to go. And I was just asking you about how important the final two and a half might be for the cards. And then Mintz hits the pull up jumper, and now Brown the dunk off the uh, pretty good execution in the half court. It is, but it's also a late rotation uh, coming down on the other end. And we're going to see a ball screen coming. Take an eye, keep an eye on number five. Brandon Huntley Hatfield on the baseline side. I know this is a tough angle. He's got to come over, follow the basketball. He's a day late and a dollar short. If he rotates correctly early in the possession, he's going to be much better off to be that help side defender. Long three off of Clark's hand. And Mark Schnurse had last touched Louisville, so it'll belong to Syracuse. So scoring drought for the cards now, just inside of three minutes. And now all of a sudden, 153 to go and four in a row here by Syracuse to push it to seven. Starling back out there. 
He'll re-rack back down the lane. High Archer over Huntley Hatfield. Good for J.J. Starling. First field goal, he's got three. Tough. Tough yep. move. He actually had the entire baseline side. Saw Justin Taylor coming over. Flipped the screen, got middle. Starling, terrific athlete, finishes over the top. Tyler Johnson through traffic. And the rebound pulled away by Brown. Here comes Starling again. Taylor, oh, he tried to hit, I think, Brown coming down the lane and sailed it back out over the top. And Mark Schnur going to do a little bit of housekeeping here. He'll stop the play with 71 seconds left. And, of course, the auto owner's insurance halftime tune in. Coming up here at the break. Syracuse on the considered list coming into today's play. Plus more look around the ACC. What's already been a busy day. There are. There's a drive and score by Mintz. Mintz now gives Syracuse their largest lead. It's delayed scissors action. They weren't even really in position. But if you're not engaged off the ball, you can forget it. Yep. There's the drive, That's rebound. A horrible shot. Here's Taylor trying to create initiative. He'll give it to Starling. Ten second differentials. We work to the end of the half here. I'm not one to pull punches. You can't take that shot right there. Mm -hmm. Yep. You're stuck. Dribble that ball out. Play off two feet. Kick the ball out. Eight to shoot. Look at Starling over the top of Huntley Hatfield. It'll rim off. Brown tried to keep it alive. And saved it, but to Louisville. Scott Clark with nine. Bounce pass Johnson. Right back, layup good, and it's James. Just how they drew it up. And a timeout with 5.1 left to go. Cuts it back to single figures at nine. Somebody's got to get back on defense. Mintz was there. It's got to be that extra guy, but. And there is James getting what is just his second field goal. Terrence, we were talking, and we're going to hear with Kelsey and the crew coming up here at the break. There are already five finals today. Top four received the double bye. Wake Forest has had a tough week. Yeah. After that massive win that they so desperately needed against Duke. Right. Put themselves in position for the NCAA tournament and then drop a couple. That's tough. All right. So in your mind, who are you more concerned about with a week to go in the regular season? Steve Forbes or Tony Bennett? As far as getting in the tournament? Yes, sir. I would say Steve Forbes and Wake Forest. They, they need to finish off strong, uh, especially after campaigning in the manner that they have lately. Right. They need to finish off, and then they probably need to win a game in the ACC tournament just so they leave no doubt. What a set. Look My at Mintz. Gosh. A hammer at the horn by Judah Mintz. How does that happen? Mintz has got 15 at the break, and the last one. Yes, I think he's special in that regard. Well, he's got 15 to lead everybody in this first half. And with the lead, the Orange have the ball. Trying to win for the fourth straight time. It would be five out of six, and there's a foul called off the ball by Mark Schnur. And it is on Trey White. His second, the first of the half on the cards. Whoa, wait a second. T.O.'s first team all ACC. Here it is. In I... the first, hold on, nine seconds of the second half. <laughs> we might as well. We start talking about it. P.J., Hunter Salas has been terrific. Obviously, Filipowski's been good. Uh, Judah Mintz between him and Blake Henson uh -huh. for that fifth spot in my mind. Blake Henson's been great for Pitt. Judah, uh, Judah Mintz, though, so good. What a shot. Fall away, bounds away. Clark and the cards on the run, and James had it blocked off the glass by Starling. Here comes the orange the other way, and Mintz hits Brown, who can't finish it. Taylor saved it. Starling bangs a three. What a play. And why does that happen? You miss a layup. You don't get off the floor in time to get back and get in the play defensively. It's a reoccurring theme for this Louisville team. 14-point lead, largest of the night. For the orange. Zone again. And Glenn lost it off his shoe. James fires back through. Clark launching. Front rim miss. Here's Starling on the run out again. 
JJ thought about it. Good recognition. That's a sophomore guard at the end of his sophomore season realizing I don't have any options here. Mets into traffic. Starling. Bell for three. It got partially blocked by James. Bell thought he was fouled. Here's a lead, and Glenn another catch at the glass and a score. Nine for Glenn on his fourth field goal. A lot to like about freshman Caleb Glenn, by the way. Well, he's undersized. He doesn't have much of a jump shot, if any at all. And he just finds ways to impact the game with his effort. I love guys like that. Bell pulls up, knocks down the two. 11 for Bell, his sixth double-figure effort in the last eight. He's a know-your-role All-American, right? Mm. One Inside of one dribble, catch and shoot, knows what he's good at, plays defense. I'm a fan. Here's Glenn against Taylor and one. Caleb Glenn fouled by Justin Taylor. And that's going to put Glenn to the stripe for a chance to convert the three-point trip here. He's into double figures, by the way. Third time in the last six games for Caleb Glenn. Giving a crash course on how to attack the 2-3 zone. Last possession, they go high post and then try a bounce pass in. This time, short corner to a guy diving. Clint able to get there. Clint knocks down the free throw. His second three-point trip of the night. Got a dozen, and he leads the cards in scoring. Came in, T.O. averaging five points against the league. Talk about having a strong kick in the final turn of the regular season. That's Caleb Glenn for Kenny Payne. Clark touched it last. It's going to stay with Syracuse. And now we got a technical foul on Mintz. I think he hit the ball when Mark Schnur wanted the ball. Mintz needs to calm down and sit down. Yeah, Mintz is arguing with. And he's going to come out of the ball game. I don't know what in the world happened over there, but it ended up in a technical foul, and Adrian Autry and Judah Mintz not happy. And here is James at the line, 11th best free throw shooter in the ACC at 81% for the technical foul. And the guy in James who's having a bad game so far, only 2 and 9 from the field. The last thing you need to do for a guy who can get hot, put him on the free throw line. Mintz thought he got fouled. He's driving right. Swipe down goes out of bounds. He's asking for the foul call and then just wouldn't stop when the official warned him. So, and Schnur, Mark Schnur, a pretty good official now. And all of a sudden, Mintz is holding the ball and he pulled it away from Schnur, and that's why he got the technical. Why wouldn't you just give the ball to Mark Schnur? I, I think that was more reactionary. I, I, I'll be honest, I, I don't love that technical foul. It's an emotional game. Don't take that out of it. Taylor airballed the jump shot. That's down to nine. James. Boy, if the cards can get Mike James going, that would be a boost for Kenny Payne. Caleb Glenn's already off to a terrific start in the second half. There's an air ball from White. Huntley Hatfield saves it, but still tend to shoot. A tough shot and score for Trey White. He's got nine, the lead seven. Four in a row by the Ville. Sometimes it's not always pretty, but if the effort's there to move the basketball, you're going to find avenues to score. Trey White, so athletic around the cup. Nice pass. There's Brown to try and cut a 7-0 run. Short, and he does. So a seven in a row by Louisville, and now a foul. Good effort, Huntley Hatfield. Rumbling, bumbling, stumbling almost, Wes. Doesn't have to be pretty as long as you get those two points. Trey White, he has a lot of natural talent. Long arms, 6'7", yep. can score. I, I think picking his spots is somewhere he needs to improve. Wow. Look at Brown go wow. get it, and he's fouled by James. Brown ends up falling out of bounds in the corner near the photographer's well. He was the shooter. Yep, sure was, and nobody was on the lane. So Brown chased it. How does that happen? That cannot happen. That's two things in this game, Wes, where you, you, you're 
you see something happen, you just scratch your head. A free throw line box out where the only person on the line is the free throw shooter. And at half court, where the five man's up past half court trying to pressure, and you get a wide open layup. These things can't happen in ACC play ever. Yep. Here's Copeland, and he's fouled by Glenn, and a couple of free throws will be coming there. Third on Caleb Glenn, third on Louisville. Hey, well, Caleb Glenn, he, he has the body to be an elite defender. Yep. He does need to learn that when somebody's attacking you, you put your arms out, you attack them with your chest, and you're going to be able to have success. You can't put two hands on the ball handler. Tyler Johnson will check in, and Glenn's going to go out. Starling out in the midcourt area now with Taylor Copeland, Brown, and Chris Bell. The microphone surveying, surveying the floor. Look Whoa, at this. what a shot! <laughs> Holy smokes! <laughs> He's talented, isn't he? Copeland has a dunk where he lost a shoe, and now he went 360. He's a whirling dervish, this guy. Holy smokes, he's had two field goals tonight. He doesn't have to score for the rest of the month. <laughs> he won't find better highlights. He was telling everybody in the building about it on the way back down. And James draws the foul. They're going to have to stack stops, Wes, if they're going to get back in this game. But if it's Syracuse, quit here, Copeland, the microphone. Look at this. Look at the end. One spin. And give me another one. A little finger roll. That's just silly. Thanks, everyone, especially Vicki. She's been with us since the beginning and saved us enough on our insurance to help us open our second location. Auto Owners offers a variety of discounts for life, home, car, and business insurance because they think the more you protect, the more you should save. I couldn't have said it better myself, Vicki. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. Uh, who are you talking to anyway? It's a commercial. Finished my chores. Ready for my allowance. Greenlight is way better than how I got paid for chores. Mowing all those lawns really paid off. <laughs> that was not radical. Bring your family into the financial future. I don't like to spend a ton of time shopping, but I like to look good. For me, Poshmark makes that so easy. And whenever I get tired of something, I just relist it back on Poshmark. It's honestly a little addicting. Making some money I can spend, keep my wardrobe fresh. If losing weight has you frustrated, a group of doctors created a remarkable weight loss supplement called Lean, and it's very encouraging. The studied ingredients in Lean have been shown to help maintain healthy glucose levels, help burn fat by converting excess fat into energy, and reduce appetite so you eat less. If you've tried everything to lose weight, non-prescription lean could be the answer you've been searching for. Visit TakeLean.com and get 15% off with promo code TRIM at TakeLean.com. Thanks to Avalara, we can calculate sell stocks automatically. Avalara. What if tax rates change? Uh, Filing sales tax returns. Uh, Business license guidance. Uh, Cross-border uh, sales. Item classification. Uh, Does it connect with uh, it? What is an athlete? It's an attitude. A healthy desire to do as much as you can with your body for as long as you can. Gatorade has lower sugar, electrolyte-backed hydration options to keep you rehydrated and replenished. Gatorade. For every athlete. Forever. I bought three of the same jacket to get the fourth free. I subscribed to get a deal on these memory supplements, then forgot to cancel. Well, you know, recognizing a bad deal is a part of the journey. Yes, Eva, would you like to share your breakthrough? I got AT&T's best deal on the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus and got to choose my plan. Oh. Yes, we don't make you sign up for the top tier plan to get our best deal. I still haven't gone. I subscribe again. Yeah, the we know. Get the newest Galaxy on us with any of our best plans, guaranteed. Well, nine-point lead for the Orange as we rejoin you tonight from the Yum Center. Great to be with Terrence Oglesby, West Durham. Orange has looked the part tonight. And, you know, when you start thinking about where Syracuse is, 19 and 10, 10 and 8, net of 82 coming into today. 
and, and give me somebody who's been as impactful in two field goals as Quadir Copeland has. It, it's not just those two amazing field goals. It's the passing, the short world decision making, the guy who's getting it to the next player. I, I'm impressed. Good size. Quadir Copeland, he talks the entire game. Right. And, and you know, some guys get annoyed with that thing. I love it. I, I love a guy who's vocal, who's going to be on the floor, direct traffic. Big fan. James knocks down the free throw. Mike now with a backdoor five point second half, nine in the game. Starling to work on Johnson, and a dick down creates a turnover. Eight point game. Clark. Great job, Johnson, pulling the tape, pulling the chair out. Yep. And here comes that zone again, Terrence. Bounce pass in traffic. Copeland stepped in front. Turned over by the cards. Mintz waits at the table for Adrian Autry. Here goes Copeland on the drive, stripped of it. Here's Clark. Lob. James the dunk. Louisville gets a little momentum built in this house at the Yum Center. How about Tyler Johnson? Incredibly quick hands. Getting the post deflection, leading to an opportunity. And then on this one, you try to go up and finish. He's got such quick hands, he's able to dig in. And Sky Clark, he'll throw it up to miss it. Mike James. Thanks to Avalara, we can calculate sales tax automatically. Avalara. What if tax rates change? Uh, Filing sales tax returns. Uh, Business license guidance. Uh, Cross-border uh, sales. Item classification. Uh, Does it connect with uh, Are you still cleaning your floors with a broom and dustpan? Or down on your hands and knees with paper towels? Or dragging out your big heavy vacuum? Forget about it! George and Mary Beth back with another incredible invention. It's the Zippy Sweeper, the rechargeable cordless sweeper that's lightweight and compact with an advanced triangular design that gets into corners and features 360 degree omnidirectional cleaning. It cleans any mess on carpets, hard floors, even long baseboards in any direction. Watch this. It cleans dirt and dust. All of her hair. And his trail of messy little crumbs. It cleans up wet vegetables. How about this confetti on the carpet? How about this broken glass? The secret? Advanced tri-brush technology. There's a separate brush on each side of the unique triangular head. No matter which way you move the triangular cleaning head, the three high-speed spinning brushes will sweep every speck from your floor right into the built-in quick-release dirt tray. Ordinary vacuums can miss messes and corners, but not the Zippy Sweeper. Its triangular head and built-in spinning edge brush pull the dirt out of corners where vacuums miss. Sorry, Fido. With its swiveling head and super low profile design, you can clean under your furniture without moving it. The Zippy Cordless Sweeper is five times lighter than an average vacuum cleaner, so it's great for cleaning the stairs. Zip into the future with Zippy Sweeper. Call or go online and get the incredible Zippy Sweeper for just two easy payments of $79.99. But wait, if you call or go online now, we'll make a payment for you. That's right, just pay $79.99. And that's not all. Call now and you'll also get free shipping. That's just $79.99 for the Zippy Sweeper and free shipping. Call now. I don't like to spend a ton of time shopping, but I like to look good. For me, Poshmark makes that so easy. And whenever I get tired of something, I just relist it back on Poshmark. It's honestly a little addicting. Making some money I can spend, keep my wardrobe fresh. There's one thing that never changes. Georgia. The anticipation. Georgia. The whole day. Six point lead for the Orange. Interesting second half. We've seen a little bit of everything, and we hadn't quite played six minutes, Terrence. No, we haven't, but here's the thing Mike James, he's been a guy that. Whenever Louisville's playing well, and they right. have in spurts during this season, I'm, it, he's a guy that when they play well, he needs to play well because that energy, that effort, uh, getting to the cup, if he's finishing some of these shots, 
they don't have to get back in transition defense and they can set their defense when they've set their defense today I think Louisville's been pretty good there's been a couple of mental lapses but not all that many here's Brown had it poked away recovers fires it into Copeland Mintz has returned to the lineup he gets into traffic and that'll be a block that's a good call yep sure is Jerry heater with the whistle on Sky Clark it'll be his second four now on the cards it's a good call Jerry heater and the emphasis this season has been on this block charge and most of these calls are going to the offensive player you have to get there extremely early last year that's a charge right this year you have to get there on the initial gather step Clark just a half second too late as the secondary defender first of two for Mintz no good hey Louisville just hanging around at home yep. just hanging around sure are but there's some general confusion if you're guarding the basketball and you're the primary defender you can still get over and take that charge in the chest which we saw in the first half but that secondary defender the help defender you have to be there extremely early 16 for Mintz first points in the second half by the way lead is seven and Mintz does a great job of whipping that ball screen in the zone Johnson the standing three and Copeland the rebound what a terrific box out by Brown underneath by the way against Huntley Hatfield ball screen freeze Mintz on the dribble here look at this work great pass Copeland's great there caught it Come. and foul T.O. begging for another highlight field goal from Quadir Copeland. It's the only way he scores, Wes. <laughs> it's a true. It's the only way he scores. Yeah. Now, it, good cut recognition, right? Louisville is extremely cognizant of when Judah Mintz has the basketball against Tyler Johnson. And as a result, that second defender's coming over. As soon as he turned his head, and it was Sky Clark, as soon as Sky Clark turned his head, Quadir Copeland cuts to the rim, and he gets a wide open look at it. Don't forget the Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament begins on Wednesday at the Coliseum in Greensboro. Every matchup but the title game is right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. First round coverage starts at 1230 Eastern with the nothing but net crew from the Gate City. And there's a quick look at the standings. And you see Virginia Tech, Syracuse, NC State right there. So one of two free throws for Cope and at the other end a foul or no ball got kicked didn't it? Yep, ball got kicked. Here's James tend to shoot floater by Johnson Huntley Hatfield's been quiet tonight. He scores on the stick back. He needs six for Brandon. He needs to be ready. That ball gets to the high post. Have your hands ready and be ready to explode up. Here's Copeland rolling on Johnson into traffic scores easily. It's a mismatch win, right? I'm bigger than you. Yep. That's all that is. Seven for Copeland, five and a half. Lead to eight now for the Orange. Trying to win on the road for the third time in the league and the fourth time this year. And a three ball from White. Second three of the night for the sophomore from Dallas. Quick ball movement, sharp passes. A dozen for Trey White. Five point game. Bell answers. Just start running back at that point. He gets a clean look. Just start running back. Chris Bell, big time shooter. Back to an eight point game. He's, he's pulling a Luke Hancock in the building that Luke Hancock built. Yeah, fact. Here's a ball picked up and. Out of bounds went James in the scrum with Bell, and it's going to belong to Syracuse here. Johnson out. Curtis Williams checks in, and the Orange will put it in play. Here goes Mintz all the way through, and he scores. <laughs> he just floats. What a move. 
You cannot turn your head if a ball screen's coming. Cannot. You have to make him use it. Look at this. Three point shooting. It's starting to open up a little bit. Somebody took the lid off, Wes. Sharp passing. Trey White, he knows what to do. And on the other end, what you can do, sir, I can do better. Chris Bell, big time shooter, has Cuse up 10. How many times have I felt this good? Let me count for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Times have I felt this good. Hey! You like Dr. Pepper strawberries and cream? Having health insurance is important. So if anyone in your family has Medicaid or CHIP, listen up. Check the mail for your renewal form. Complete the form. And mail it back right away so you don't lose your coverage. If you do lose your coverage, visit healthcare.gov to see if you're eligible to enroll in a low-cost, quality health plan. Healthcare.gov. Some people just know that the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate. Because you know that just because it fits in the cup holder doesn't make it to go. And you know how to break without breaking everything. And you're definitely not doing, okay, I don't even know what this is, but you're definitely not doing that. With Allstate, you're connected to a rate based on you. to be an ACC fan at Fanatics.com, the largest assortment of officially licensed ACC fan gear anywhere. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. We're in the security business. Our job is to help people feel safe. Not only our customers, but those who matter most to them, just like our company does for us. We have great benefits from principal, so I know I'm taken care of. And not just me, but the ones who matter most to me. Blue Bloods, contenders, neighbors, and rivals. The Heels and the Blue Devils. Let's go. They always respond. Such fire from both. The game's a marathon. Year after year, it always delivers. They are ready to rock. Well, well, next Saturday night, 6.30 on ESPN, second meeting of the Battle of the Blues, and gives you some of the lines here from the first meeting. How about that? You, you had your basic uh, eight guys in double figures, right? McCain had 23, first time he ever walked in the door at Chapel Hill. Right? Bunch, bunch of buckets. Yeah. Bunch of buckets. Both By the way, it's extremely also, talented. Also, chances think could determine the regular season along the way, too. Yep. The top seed in the tournament. That's next Saturday night. Home teams have won every game, with the exception of one so far, of the five played. Notre Dame uh, leading Clemson in the final minute at South Bend. Pitt beat at Pitt one at Boston College and Syracuse trying to win here. That would make home teams five and two on the day. And a side note to that, we came into the day with 36 games of the conference schedule being five or less or overtime. We will have had none today. It's 28% of the games, Terrence. That's a very low number for this league, being five or less. That ball got knocked out of bounds. It'll belong to the Orange. To give you some idea, there have okay. only been five overtime ACC games this year. The last one was January 24th. Wow. NC State, Virginia, and Charlottesville. 
four fouls on Copeland, by the way. Was that the same game where Virginia shot one of 11 from the free throw line and still won the game? No, that was the Wake Forest game. That was game. the Wake Forest game. Four fouls second half on uh, Syracuse, by the way. And Mintz. What a handful. That's draws a, a foul. It's unbelievable. And Red Autry has supreme confidence in Mintz because he attacked, got stopped, re-attacked, got stopped. Sky Clark played great defense for three drive attempts and then gets greedy on the last second. I actually think there's a lot of ball with that, that shot attempt. By the way, that is seven fouls on Louisville with 11-24 to play, third on Clark. So Mintz, the front end of the one and one. This guy goes to the line, by the way. Relentless. This is his sixth attempt of the night to give him 251 on the year. 11 point lead for Syracuse. Orange trying to win for the fourth straight time. They shot 57% the other night, beating Virginia Tech. There's one knocked away from James. Here's transition roll again, and that is a scoring drive by Starling. Eight for Starling. Wide ball turnovers. You cannot defend if you're not in front. What did Kenny Payne say to us in our visit pregame? We had 17 turnovers. They had 23 points in the first meeting. 33 points. There's the miss. And recovered at range by White. And that got blocked from behind by Bell. Good second effort. Red Autry thrilled. 8 nothing run, the last two and change. Syracuse has hit their last six shots on the floor. There goes Mintz. Feeds Taylor up and under for the basket. Come on. And that'll be a timeout for the cards. And three in the orange is running the show tonight at the Yum Center. They're up 15. You can feel confident Continental is the smart choice in tires. And the handle extremes? Yep. Tested from the Texas desert to near the Arctic Circle. Really? Really. Anything for the guy who finds that one pothole? Yeah. Road hazard coverage has your back. For real? Absolutely. Were they made by, like, a bajillion engineers? Well, closer to 100. Continental. Welcome to the smart choice in tires. 15 point lead, 62 47. 10 0 run here in the last two minutes for the Orange, T.O. Judah Mintz acting silly. And here's the thing if you're guarding the ball, look at number one's head. As soon as he focuses away from the cup and he thinks a screen's coming, that might as well be a green light. He's turned down ball screens today three to four times and he's ended up at the rim. If you're guarding somebody as dynamic as that, you have to send him to where the help's at. Wes, that's not very good defense, and that's a young player not understanding that when I'm playing somebody, I have to send him to where that extra guy is. He turns that screen. He's on a highway to the rim. It's a really easy chance to finish a play. And another turnover forced out of the zone. In fact, here goes the challenge again for Louisville. Mintz at the front. Working on Clark. Shook him on a bounce. Got into traffic. Fed that Brown and got shoved. That'll be a foul on the cards. Tio, he's controlling the game off the dribble, let he, alone what he does when he gets the ball to the rim. He is. He just takes his time, and he's getting wherever he wants. And by calling for the ball screen, it leaves the guy guarding him guessing. And he's trying his best to stay away from that extra defender. And as a result, there's nobody there until he gets to that second line, and that's when decision-making happens. And quite frankly, that's where he's improved the most throughout his career in a Syracuse uniform. Early in his career, that extra pass he made to Jason Taylor earlier, yeah. or Justin Taylor, excuse me, earlier, that wouldn't have happened. He would have shot it. Now he's become much more accustomed to being that primary ball handler and creating not just for himself, but for the other guys. Exhibit A is Malik Brown hits a free throw. So Brown makes the free throw. Quick reminder to you, a new edition of All Access, the ACC Live premieres Monday night, featuring the number five Virginia Tech women's basketball team, Pitt Gymnastics, Miami women's golf. Unprecedented access into the lives of student athletes, coaches, and staff. 7 o'clock Eastern. It follows Pack and Taylor on ACCPM right here on ACCN. Brown hit them both. He's got seven. 
Hey, there is a lot to watch. Here's another brutal. steal. Mintz will feed Taylor up and under again, and a foul called as Taylor, I think, took some contact. And here's the problem with Tyler Johnson being out on the floor right now. Since he's a non shooter, Mintz has completely backed off into the paint. Yeah. And since Johnson's not a threat from beyond the arc, he just sits back in that passing lane. Those things, like, these are small things. If if you're not a threat from right there, make a quick hard pass and at least get that ball moving. Louisville, whenever they're not dribbling against the zone, they've had some success getting it around a perimeter. Problem is, whenever Johnson's catching it, he immediately puts it on the deck. Justin Taylor missed the front of the two for Red Autry. Lead is 17, and it stays there. Hey, and Johnson brings a lot of positives. I, I, I don't want to be too hard on the kid, but a lot of these things, good extra pass, but the problem is it goes over his head. They're just not sharp movements and sharp passes. It's a bounce here. It's a fumble there, and this is a great possession. Huntley Hatfield raked out of there, but a foul called on the orange. Be the fifth called on Syracuse. And it's on Justin Taylor, his second. And it is five on the orange and number five for the cards will shoot free throws. That's Brandon Huntley Hatfield at 66%. He's now got seven in the game. But that ball went from right corner to 45 to 45 to other corner. Mm. Quick attack and you're able to find something. Another As guy had a good February. He's talented. He's really talented out of Clarksville, Tennessee. Like people don't remember this in the class of 2022. He was a top five player in his class. Yep. Reclasses up, goes to Tennessee, doesn't work out there. The, like the natural talent, the body size, the athleticism, it screams next level potential. But you have to put it all together to get consideration. Taylor can't finish on pain. I'm going to follow up on that because I have a question about some of these young guys that reclassify. And it applies to an old coaching adage. There's Huntley Hatfield fouled on the spin. Terrence. Tell me now, we see a lot of guards reclassify, and it works out okay. Some are exceptional. Elliot Cadeau, Tyrese Proctor, two sure. guys that have reclassified play well. It's a little harder, I think, for big guys, isn't it? To embrace the physicality, sure. And he's put on a lot of weight. But sometimes, Wes, like you mentioned, Tyrese Proctor and Elliot Cadeau, those guys were older to begin with. Right. So I think they had been... I think the right they had reclassed before and then reclassed up sure. like Elliot Cadeau's 19 years old. Right. He's, he's a freshman's age. Same with Tyrese Proctor. He's a sophomore's age. They just reclassed up in order to get to where their original class was. But the interesting part is the old coaching adage is takes longer for bigs to mature though, right? Yeah. It, it, because physically, and if you're asking him to show up a year early like Huntley Hatfield, whether his age is right or not, it's still tough. Maybe it, tougher. It is. It is because you have to embrace the physicality. Everything inside of 12 feet. Hurts. <laughs> That's the reason I didn't go in there all that often. That's a great line. Here's Bell at the foul line. That got blocked and fouled by Johnson. That's a mismatch for Tyler Johnson. Though. Yeah, but that's that was good defense. I thought he got up and blocked that shot. It's 10, by the way, on the Ville with 8:26 to play. Two I, shots on every common foul. I'm sorry, for interrupting you, Wes. I'm still I'm still working on my timing with you. First time working with you, <laughs> which I'm thrilled about, by the way. But free throw good. But. Coming off a of curl, I thought Tyler Johnson, he's done some nice things defensively, forcing turnovers, trailing uh, Chris Bell, who's a terrific shooter. I thought it was awfully close to being to being a clean block. He just has to learn the point guard position. I got 18 for Bell tonight. He's good. Seven and a half, nine and a half, nine in the first half. We'll double check that. It's 19 for Mint, 16 for Bell. Pretty good. Really good. Here is White for three. Look at Taylor ripping away. And Justin Taylor's built a little momentum tonight for a guy who has had a couple nondescript games, you know, just kind of helping the team, right? 6 6 sophomore from Charlottesville, went to St. Anne's Belfield. And that'll get us to a timeout. 16 point game, under eight to go. Tonight at the Bill. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. Hey, sweetie, how was practice? My mom was a cheerleader in school. She knows how intense it can be.
That's why she always keeps me well fed. Girls. Oh, hey, Miss Jay. Come on, team. We got this. Let's go. Hey, honey. I may have picked basketball over pom-poms, but Mom. I still got the world's best cheerleader rooting me on. You're always there for them, and we're always here for you. Food Lion, here for every moment. When you automate sales tax with Avalara, you don't have to worry about things like changing tax rates or filing returns. Avalara. What is an athlete? It's an attitude. A healthy desire to do as much as you can with your body for as long as you can. Gatorade has lower sugar, electrolyte-backed hydration options to keep you rehydrated and replenished. Gatorade. For every athlete. Forever. The most passion, the most intensity. This is the way basketball is supposed to be. I just love the competition and basketball is a great way to keep pushing that every single day. Golf is all about getting creative and it's about knowing how to play the game. We are so dedicated to pushing our limits. We know that Spectrum Mobile means amazing value. For $29.99, you get unlimited talk, text, data, nationwide 5G, coast-to-coast -coast coverage, speed boost. It's just a lot of great stuff. So I made this. Everything that's on it, you get, and you can spin it. But no matter where it lands, you already get everything on it. Exactly. So you don't have to spin it. You know what? Let's just forget about the wheel. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Get more with your mobile. Get Spectrum Mobile. You get that? You get that? Add an unlimited line for $29.99. Call, click, or visit a Spectrum store today. Recently changed jobs or received a raise? Make sure your taxes are being done 100% correctly. Intuit TurboTax has done millions of tax returns, so you can trust they'll do yours right with 100% accuracy guaranteed. Visit TurboTax.com. Did you know taking Zizol at night relieves allergies while you sleep? So you wake refreshed for a more productive day. Get 24-hour continuous relief that does not fade. Be wise all. Take Zizol at night. Well, Judah Mintz, he was at the top of our scouting report tonight, and he's staying there, Terrence. He's a bad man. Such pace, never sped up, just a really good player, and whenever he's operating right here, it, because he's so good, he's always probing the defense, slow to fast, and then when he gets in transition, this was crazy. Such a good athlete. I saw him play for the first time for Team Durant at the Nike Beach Jam. And he did a lot of those same things. You can tell he gets to spots quickly because his steps are so long. And whenever the defense is guarding him, they can never really relax. And you see it. Last month, 19 points a game, 19 points tonight. On the other end, Sky Clark just hasn't been able to get loose. They have keyed in on what he's done for this Cardinals team. Yep. Tough night for Clark. Clark's and better when the ball moves. Tough night for the Bill. Here is Bell at the line. Chris on the first of two is good. That gives him now 17 in the ball game. He is five for six at the stripe. I got it. Under eight to go, and the next one good. So Bell and Mintz. And this is Orange back to the zone. Largest lead of the night now at 18 for Red Autry's team. White. Pass for Huntley Hatfield, and he'll score. I like that set. Quick duck in against the zone. Have Trey White attack the middle. Late duck in by Huntley Hatfield. He knows what to do. Eight straight double-figure game for Huntley Hatfield. Still a 16-point deficit. Bell, a shot fake. And the three rattles in. Look out now. Here comes Bell. That'll push him over 20 in the ball game. He's got 21 to take the scoring lead from Mintz. 40 of the 71 belong to those two guys. Some really good shooters in this league. Would you say he ranks up there towards the top? Yeah. Yep, I would. There's Zan Payne, who, by the way, 
has only hit two field goals this year and no threes as he missed on that fifth three point try of the year. Six and a half to go here at the Yum Center. This is the last of the seven games on this second to last Saturday of the regular season. There's a drive by Mitz and the rebound for James. He'll push ahead. Here's Tyler Johnson driving and blocked by Bell. Foul on Bell will be his second and the seventh on the orange. So free throws coming for the freshman from Brooklyn. All right, all other of the games are all already final. So here's where we are. And I'll draw your attention to behind Virginia. Clemson, Wake, and Syracuse. So, yes, a win tonight for the moment would put the Orange in fourth. Now, they only have one game left in the regular season, and that game is Tuesday night in Clemson. P.J. Hall senior night. It's a tough game. Johnson has five, by the way, on the free throw. But how about Red Autry and the move that the Orange has made? Now, Terrence, perception, whatever, net, street cred, eye test, quad, I don't care. Leave when, the quads at home. I'm sick of talking about the quads. When you put four in a row together, five of six and six of eight in February, and you do have a win over Carolina and at Pitt, you're a little bit more than considered, aren't you? One would assume. I think Red Autry's done a great job in his first year. He's still kind of figuring himself out as to what he's going to be as a head coach, right? And they got a lot of help today. They did. I mean, when you think about it, Virginia Tech and Notre Dame helped Syracuse today. Because if you get a double bye here, you know, now granted, everything's not been perfect, but you are playing well down the stretch, which I still think has some has merit. Has to matter some, yeah. right? It's amazing to me is this five that's on the floor for Syracuse has played so much. Yep. This was incidental contact as they're going to take a look at it. Sky Clark caught one right in the jaw as Mintz was driving to the hoop. They're calling the foul on Mintz, which would be his third, right? That is nine on the orange. You'll see at the top. Okay, so Mark Schnur tells us it is an offensive foul on Mintz. Didn't look like anything else. No. Ron Gruber, Jerry Heater, and we're going to stay with what was on the floor. Nothing added. So no extra add on that. That's a nice, quick decision. Yep, like that. Fan of the quick reviews. 16 point game it is with six minutes to go. <laughs> the last time these two teams met in Syracuse. Yeah. Red Autry was talking about yeah we had three. No it was in the North Carolina game. Excuse me, I'm sorry. It was a North Carolina game. He said yeah we had three reviews at the end of the game took an extra 45 minutes. I was ready to get home. <laughs> yeah. And it was all Copeland. Yeah he was he was ready to get home to enjoy the win. No kidding. And it's really kind of the win that when you look at the way things have gone it kind of set off the orange. Here's Huntley Hatfield Clark baseline nice pass back to Glenn who couldn't finish and we're going to get a whistle and a foul. And that is Bell's third. Ten by the way now on uh, Syracuse here in this second half. And that's going to put Caleb Glenn at the line. Shooting two. Don't forget, tonight at 10 Eastern, roughly, we hope to be through here in the next few minutes. We'll get Kelsey Riggs. And by the way, we got everybody there tonight. Full table for the late night buffet. Bayhan, Boozer, Barry, Hancock, and Kelsey Riggs. The starting five. Yeah, that is the starting five. You know, as you look at this. And boy, does she have her work cut out for her tonight. <laughs> Mike James, the recovery and the score, by the way. You know, if you look ahead to Syracuse's team next year, if they're able to hold everybody together. Man, he took a lot of steps, didn't he? Yep. Got away with it. Crowd thought he traveled. So did you. Here's Clark. And we'll get a foul on Malik Brown. 
trying to reset Huntley Hatfield at the post. So Brown has picked up his second. Two shots coming for Brandon Huntley Hatfield. Huntley Hatfield, yeah. telling you, talented. He, he he's made a difference with his effort. They doubled him early in the game. Yep. Yep. Syracuse goes two three. He's cutting along the baseline, diving to the rim. Yeah. And and then in the break, taking off and sealing low. All right. By the way, I know you said it's the first time we worked together. I was going to leave all this out, <laughs> but I decided that I wasn't going to let the forgotten muscle shirt jerseys come back into action tonight. This is young T.O. today, and like this was liked by Tyler Hansbro, by the way, your friend. It's my man. Yeah. A little bit more hair back then, but not much more. All right, but the guns. The guns were out. The guns were out. You were jacked up. Oh, oh we're look really at that. jacked up. Come on, man. What are we doing? That was jacked up. 8 0 run by the cards here have gotten this thing down to 11, <laughs> and there's a foul on a Syracuse turnover. But say, get me off that screen. We got a game to watch. How about this? <laughs> well, Louisville's playing jacked up like you were back in your Tiger days. And that is five fouls on Copeland. He's done. So Quadir Copeland, who's had a couple of highlight plays, fouls out of the ball game. And for Copeland, it'll be the third time he's fouled out in the league this year. Only 11 minutes of action. Free throw by Glenn is good with 4.53 to play. I'll tell you this now, I've seen stranger things, especially at home. Just hang around. Yep. Single digits. Glenn hit them both. Now four of six at the line is Caleb Glenn. Lead to nine with under five to go. Ten nothing run the last 90 seconds for the cards. Mintz, nice pass. Brown couldn't finish it. James the recovery. Here's Huntley Hatfield. Building will be on its feet if they get a three here, Terrence. Certainly will. That was terrific help side defense on the late rotation. Clark, skip for James, three ball. And Bell in the corner is fouled, I believe, by Huntley Hatfield. I'm going to be honest, I, I don't think they featured him enough today. Uh, Huntley Hatfield's made quick decisions in the post. He got it in the high post, swings it out. They get a good shot. He's focusing on the right things. Third on Brandon Huntley Hatfield puts Chris Bell at the line. Bell is six for seven at the strike. Two shots. He had 30 the first time they played. He's got 21 tonight, make it 22. He and Mintz are challenging matchups for Kenny Payne's man-to-man. -man. Especially the way he comes off screens on balance. That's something that's taught as far as footwork is concerned. And Chris Bell, I mean, really talented individual. 23 tonight now for Bell, and there's James an easy bucket. Mike James now 15 in the ballgame on his sixth field goal. That's Justin Taylor on that back side of that wing. Ball you, man, and, and I know they're in the zone, but you're responsible for that corner. Have to know where guys are at. Mintz picked up on the dribble. Flips it to Starling. J.J. Starling's been quiet, hasn't he? Has only seven points or eight points in the ballgame. Five to shoot, drives to the basket, got to the rim. Still a nine-point game after the miss. Clark, a lob, Glenn the catch. Bell blocked it. What a play by Bell and a foul on Glenn. Wow. Fourth on Caleb Glenn gets us to a timeout. You think you're going to make a run at the end. Chris Bell, he's been a little bit of everywhere. Take that one with you. Syracuse holding them all. Liberty Mutual customized my car insurance and I saved hundreds. That's great. I know. I've been telling everyone. Liberty. <gasps> Liberty. How many people did you tell? Only pay for what you need. Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. Liberty. 
investment opportunities are everywhere you turn. Do you charge forward? Freeze in your tracks? Or let curiosity light the way? At T. Rowe Price, we ask smart questions about opportunities like advances in healthcare and how these innovations will create a healthier world tomorrow. Better questions, better outcomes. I bought three of the same jacket to get the fourth free. I subscribed to get a deal on these memory supplements, then forgot to cancel. Yeah, well, you know, recognizing a bad deal is a part of the journey. Yes, Eva, would you like to share your breakthrough? I got AT&T's best deal on the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus and got to choose my plan. Oh. Yes, we don't make you sign up for the top tier plan to get our best deal. I still haven't gone. I subscribe again. Yeah, the we know. Get the newest Galaxy on us with any of our best plans, guaranteed. It's bow time. What's that? The bow jingler from Bojangles. With the same bold flavor as their chicken? The same. And fries? The same. Ooh, not the same. The bow jangler's back. Hook one while you can. It's bow time. And so? There's one thing that never changes. Georgia. The anticipation. Georgia. The whole thing. I just love the competition. The basketball is a great way to keep pushing that every single day. Amor. Speeding oh. down the floor like a speeding bullet. Golf is all about getting creative, and it's about knowing how to play the game, not how to strike the ball, which I think a lot of players are underestimating. We are so dedicated to pushing our limits and growing each week. For Pitt, the first ever home ACC meet. She's the it girl, she can't control it. The moment is here. Who will meet it? The Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament. First round begins Wednesday at 1 on ACCN. Well, nine-point lead for the Orange. Remember, they played less than a month ago at the JMA. And a goaltending call late in the game gave Syracuse the 94-92 win. Now, Bell had 30. Mintz and Starling had 40. That's 70 between three cats, Terrence. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> yeah, it will. That'll do it. Hey, Bell, he's done it tonight, too. An efficient 23 points, a 6 of 9 shooting. Well, they got 42 of the 73, he admits to. And when all three get going, Man. Starling, and, and I think it's been a pretty quiet night for Starling, given that you know, he came into the ball game averaging 16 in his last five. Free throw by Brown, no good. And... One more coming. Another guy, Justin Taylor, shot 39% from three last year. He has not found his rhythm. You get all these guys back next year. Sure. And, and in theory, you can see what they're trying to do. Two rim attack guards, two shooters on the perimeter, and a big who's a lob threat. Double-double for Brown tonight. There's a three ball from Clark. K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, sir. Get yep. your shooter in the right wing. Quick ball screen to draw over that second defender in the zone. That's target practice for Sky Clark. Yep. Starling now in a seven-point game under three to go. Fights through, up off the glass and in. Tough shot. Seven and a half for Starling, ten in the ball game. He is the fourth orange to double figures tonight. Almost a travel by Clark, wasn't it? And there goes Glenn, offensive foul. Caleb Glenn, he's fouled out. Glenn going to foul out with 14 tonight. Or check it, 15 tonight. With 2.34 to go. I love the aggressiveness by Glenn, but here, Brown is that primary defender. There's some arm there, but go about that a little bit differently. Fourth time this year, Glenn's fouled out. I'm surprised that's not higher, actually, with the manner in which he plays, mm -hmm. his aggressiveness. Another good thing, too, is J.J. Starling hits that layup high off the glass. 
Syracuse is in transition defense, really trying to get back hustling because Louisville's pushing the ball. The good thing about when you're playing zone is you're running to an exact spot. Right. So it's not one of these things where you're hurrying, trying to match up. Makes it a little bit easier in transition defense. Two and a half to go in a nine point game. Orange trying to put their fourth straight win on the board here. And find fourth place at the end of the night. Here's Brown foul line. Starling off the screen, ran into trouble. Johnson with the turnover. Cards pitch it ahead. Clark Malayas. Those things that were driving you crazy about Tyler Johnson over 10 minutes ago <laughs> are the things that are spearheading this comeback. That's a good point. Quick hands, live ball turnovers. Tyler Johnson. Under two to go. Here goes Mintz. Took some contact and a foul. Crowd here beside itself. Tyler Johnson on the other end, or on this end rather, playing defense, just pesky, pursuing the ball, seeing the guy up ahead. Terrific pass and finish. Louisville just hanging around. They're going to have to stack stops though. Clark just fouled out. And Mintz twisted his ankle in that last possession, limping his way to the foul line. First time that Clark has fouled out of an ACC game, his second of the year, with 148 to play. Seven points tonight for Los Angeles sophomore Sky Clark. And Mintz is going to go to the line. 77% free throw shooter, who by my count tonight is four of six. Judah is looking for his fourth 20 point game or more in league play. There it is. I'm sorry, it's his eighth game. I was going to say 20 that or more. Yeah. yeah, eighth game of 20 or more. Starling has three of 20 or more in conference play. And there goes Mintz, who earlier tonight was announced on Terrence Oglesby's first team All ACC squad. I'm giving it to him. Yeah. Well, I can see why. Up nine and under two to go. He's been the best player in the building. Hey. Blocked Talked by Taylor. Scramble for it and recovered by Starling. Oh, uh, how who dangerous. made an unbelievable pass. They got knocked out of bounds by Taylor. It'll go to Louisville. Look at the block and then the, the fray that then follows might not be the prettiest basketball of the night. Justin Taylor's a good athlete. He's boarded well today, done those other things. Uh, hasn't shot the ball well this season. We're going to take another look at something. I'm not sure what it is. Take a look, see if it went out of bounds on Taylor. But talk to Red Autry about Justin Taylor today, as far as like, hey, he hasn't shot it well. Yeah. So let's try to get him to focus on some of these other things. Uh, this is a guy who can shoot the basketball. He's kind of lost his confidence. Some of the best ways to get back in the mix is by doing the other things. Well, he's become a better cutter. He's done some things around the rim and obviously protecting the rim and rebounding the basketball. He's played a nice game despite not really shooting the ball all that much. They are checking to see if it was out of bounds on Taylor. And you can do this inside of two minutes, T.O. So there's the pass. Oh, wow. I think it's going to belong to Louisville. Yep. In fact, it is. Yeah. That's, it's hard to overturn that. My favorite pastime is becoming watching college players start doing the twirling motion with their fingers yeah. the entire game, thinking that the NBA rules are the same as college well, the, rules. Yeah, the, the college players feel the empowerment to say, hey, I want y'all to look at that. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, we got all this technology. Let me make sure you know that I think you ought to do that. <laughs> Zone by the orange with 13 to shoot. Here's Johnson. Syracuse needs a three here and can't wait around. Huntley Hatfield Hunt off the glass. They haven't passed him the ball enough today. I don't disagree with you. Uh, I mean, he's five of six with 17 points. But here's the thing. You're seven down with 70 seconds left, and you've only got one timeout left. Mintz can go one-on-one -on -one here. He's going to get a brown screen. Huntley Hatfield tries to help. 11 to shoot. Here's Starling. James has him. 
J.J. weaves, spins, and it rims out. Here are the cards now. Seven-point game, three possessions. Williams in the corner, Mike James a three. Oh! And Kenny Payne just used his last time out with 38.7 left. I'm not sure about that one, but these teams have been playing close. Last game, same situation, battling back. But you get a stop, you take off the run, and you get an open loop. Look, and Mike James gets it to four. Well, we told you the last time they played, early February, 94-92 was the final. Looks like we might have another tight fit. Here is Sky Clark. He hits a three. And then look at this. Claudia Copeland going down the floor and it blocked by Caleb Glenn. A goaltend is called that gave Syracuse what would be the winning margin. I still can't tell if that ball hit the back there. And Clark's three for the win at the horn. A bit too strong. 94-92 the final, and all of a sudden we bought ourselves a four-point game with 38.9 here to go tonight at the Yump Center. And you waste your last time out. Well, my thought would be you commit a foul here, get Louisville, get Syracuse to the free throw line rather than use the last time out. That's then what if I you would get it to one possession, then use your last time out, right? Yeah, and at least be able to try to set your guys up for an offensive possession to get a clean look when you know Syracuse is going to be playing 2-3 for the most part. Yep. So now Louisville's going to set some pressure. But remember, in the first, at the end of the first half, they did much of the same thing. They got two guys around Mintz. He'll have the ball on the inbound. Got a foul. Got a foul. I would think so, but... There's the bounce pass to Taylor, and there's the foul. They did not want to foul Judah Mintz. So Justin Taylor's going to go to the line. The foul is on James. And with a four-point difference and 31.4 left, Justin Taylor will go to the line where he is one for five tonight. Seventy-five percent on the year, I guess, law of averages. Yep. That gives him three and a half and eight in the ball game. And he made them both. Guess what he just did? Turned it still into a two possession game. 80 to 74, but it requires two threes. And here's Tyler Johnson. You know he's not going to shoot a three. Curtis Williams will, and it is too strong and out of bounds. It'll belong to Syracuse. How's that ball not go to Trey White? I'm with you. Like, how does that ball not get there? Or Mike James. Yeah. I mean, either one. Here's the inbounds for Brown. Right back to Taylor, and a quick foul on White is his fourth. Hey, and I'm a Curtis Williams fan. I'm not trying to take anything away from him. I, I think he's, a, he's an okay player that's going to develop into something more here at Louisville. But Trey White's gotten his rhythm. Mike James just hit a big three. You've run some good offense against his own. Why not a quick ball screen and get somebody in the right 45? And you have an open look. Taylor's got to hit one to create a third possession, and he does. That's the biggest news of this free throw situation. Now it takes three chances for Louisville to have a chance in the final 20 seconds. It's Tyler Johnson learning the point guard position. Yep. Here's White. Tyler Johnson. For Curtis Williams, another three, and rebound for Taylor, and a foul on Johnson. And that will stop the clock with 9.1 to go, and some of the partisans here at the KFC Yum Center head toward the exits on a Saturday night downtown. Some good restaurants around here, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. If nothing else, they won't be that angry with a belly full of steak, which I had one last night, which was fantastic. <laughs> well done by you. Uh, Syracuse with 9.1 left to play is staring fourth in the face on the heels of their fourth straight win. 
behind Carolina, Duke, and Virginia. The Orange will be 11 and 8. And Red Autry's team is going to win four straight and five of six and six of eight. Terrence, there's Johnson and the cards into the floor. His third field goal. And into Taylor and up for Mintz. And that will be that. The Orange have beaten the cards for the fourth straight time and for the sixth time in the last seven. And in the